Lord, Father, Sri Kang Lord, my friend, Dr. Isaac Mutai, and very enthusiastic and aspirant Gandhian thought followers. I'm extremely happy to share some of my experiences that has emerged out of my practice of Ayurveda for the last 30 years. One of the things that I used to be proud always has been being an Indian. Due to various reasons, I have been fortunate enough to travel globally and interact with uh, one of the, some of the most intellectually highly intellectually evolved personalities of different sciences, cultures and traditions. I have been again and again got mesmerized by the depth of Indian thought process. To the extent, yesterday I, just, uh, I was watching the news telling about the, seeing about the novel place for medicine, which has gone to three individuals who have worked on biological clock, which corrects the gene expressions of human being. My eye got filled with tears. I have read that inspired by the thoughts of great rishis of yore, and I call them intellectuals of that time. They were never religious leaders. They were leaders of the thought process, which changed the way human being has been thinking. And they have been connecting each living entities with the universe. And here they have been telling us the human life or in that respect any life and it is starting from the DNA or RNA molecules to the gigantic universal galaxy he is connected to a thread of energy systems and everything influences each other and sometimes this influence is not in tune with the mass it appears. So if you go to the thinking process of Chinese traditions, which is as old as India's traditional uh, tradition, they also talk about same thing. If you go to the African vocal or oral tradition, which are not documented in textbook form, but it is very rich in their thought process. They also share. So, universally speaking, uh, the life is holistic. And the holistic is the way which has been highly misrepresented. Holistic is not a science of healing alone. Holistic is the way the whole life goes in a cyclic form. Many of you who have been doing the postgraduate level education in any part of your subject will be knowing that the life and the system is not going in a linear way. We believe that it is going in a cyclic way. Check the twist in between. So this is what Ayurveda also says that the microcosm and the macrocosm are one and same. If you look into the Gandhiji's uh, life to come to the context, Gandhi used to say that the mental 
invocation you make can influence the society. The mental invocation you do can elevate you to the different planes of knowledge. We used to say that Prathana Atma Ki Kuyat Hai is the words of Gandhi. And he used to say India lives in villages. Even today, after so many decades of independence, we are still in the villages. And the beauty of village is that it is in collectivity. It is in it is in a form of a community living. When you evolve from your village to urban life, we separate ourselves. The nuclear family forms, society loses its connection and influence on each other and the whole life get distorted. I think it is very important for all of you to know how Ayurveda is connected to Buddhism. And all the thought leaders have been endorsing the concept of Buddhism. And Buddhism has gone further in medicine to a mode of integrative medicine or integrative healthcare system. Some 10 years back or 20 years back, we have people have been talking about integrated system. Today we talk about integrative system because integrative system is evolving, which is a stage which holistic medicine has given birth to. That's what I would like to talk to you about. What is integrative system? How it is connected? And how it is important and how medicine is not something that has to be bought and medicine is something that has to be inculcated within you and it gives a kind of strength and authority to individuals to control their own health. And I will always say that health is an existence within and it is not a thing to be bought from without. This is the basic of Ayurveda. Without going much to the philosophical moorings of uh, the sciences, I would like to give you some kind of a glimpse that what Ayurveda offers and what Ayurveda can give. And Ayurveda is one of the most ancient systems that has not happened because of any accident. India happened to be one of the most ancient living culture. All other culture, all other civilization has gone to boom because of its ill-built societal system. Fortunately, India has got a societal system which withhold, which carried, which allowed the science to elevate to the level of even contributing to the needs of 21st century. It has weakened some in some aspects which has come out of the mainstream sometime, but still it is serving, serving with lot of vigor and vitality. That is the background of science of Ayurveda. I would like to take to the definition of traditional medicine. Traditional medicine, even WHO, with all the capacity to comprehend, could not understand the traditional medicine of India in its complete sense. So even the definition, if you read here, can see that Ayurveda with its complete way of taking you to the different levels of existence is not able to define Ayurveda in full extent. This definition itself is an incomplete definition with respect to Ayurveda. There are, if you look into the recent trends anywhere in the modern society, the developing countries like Europe and US and Indian urban elites area, people are no more depending on a single system. People are gone beyond single system and people want to explore all the available avenues that are useful for them. And they are capable of understanding what is best for that given situation. People know what is the best thing for a chronic metabolic disorders, what is the best available remedy for a infectious diseases, how to manage. So on the integrative process, if you look into the history of evolution of integrative medicine, it has come from the needs of the people and the intelligence of the people rather than from the scientific community. 
there are different systems and the Ayurveda stand apart because of its very highly evolved codified tradition. Ayurveda is the only traditional science in the whole world which has got more than 100,000 written manuscripts even today available in different languages including Sanskrit and region languages. There are no other country that can boast such a rich tradition of resource space which are codi codified and available even today, even after all these calamities that happened in this country. There are many integrative medicine protocols uh, which are not of great interest to you, but I want you to know that countries have been trying to develop different protocols because modern medicine has failed terrifically, uh, failed miserably to understand and manage systems and uh, medi medical conditions which are there today. The 80% of the problem of today are not of infectious nature. 80% of the medical problem of our multi-causal diseases. Diseases which are causing due to your wrong dietary practices, wrong living culture, distorted lifestyle practices, all these are causing a kind of diseases for which there is no remedy in modern medicine. And these are the different protocols that are being developed by different schools of thoughts in medicine. There is actually a movement called the integrative medicine movement because of lack of efficacy of one system alone to look into the system. All these models have been developed. These are the three models. I am not going to this detail because highly technical details, but this is the these are the things I want you to know that what is happening in the holistic medicine in terms of its integrative approach. Coming back to my first point, probably Ayurveda is the science of futuristic medicine. That's what I feel when I read more and more on Ayurveda and I practice more and more of Ayurveda. Ayurveda has made a statement that any disease of any time of any region can be understood by Ayurveda. And it says that Vigana Nama Akushala Nadikriya Kadajana. Don't shy about don't not knowing the name of the disease. Name of the disease may change, but that can be understood by the deviation, the changes, the imbalances that is happening in the body through the mechanism of three doshas, Vada, Pitta and Kama, which are the functional units of the body. This is not a light statement, this is a very great statement in the area of medicine. A science telling that I can understand any disease of any time of any region with the framework which I have developed through the basic principles of Ayurveda. The second statement is more provocative. It is giving you a vast canvas of medicine. Jagatyev Manavashadana Vidya. There is nothing in the universe which is not potentially medicinal. But Yojaga Tatra Turnapa, the person who knows how to use Ayurveda. These are the two statements which keep Ayurveda apart from all the traditional medicine, which is giving you the whole, whole galaxy of things which are material and non-material in nature as a remedial measure, as a preventive measure and a promotive measure. The strength of Ayurveda, one of the weakness that we consider today as Ayurveda is it is highly indigenized. If you study the future of modern medicine, they started talking about tailor made medicine, pharmacogenomics, and Ayurveda has been telling each individual needs a separate method of treatment, separate understanding of uh, human being. And we have transferred every human being into seven basic groups. A good physician can tell you by seeing a person moving towards you with seven ten steps what kind of prakriti he is, what is his basic uh, basic uh, possibilities of getting diseases. 
we can categorize the person and that is the customized intervention which is highly talked subject of today's modern medical research. And we don't treat, I rather don't treat with the medicine alone. Medicine is one of the component. Aharam, Aushadam and Behavaram. There are the three components in which Aushadam becomes one of the components. In Aushadam also there is pharmacological medicine, medicine which are coming out of herbal or mineral or animal origin and non-pharmaceutical medicine, non-pharmacological medicine, which are not the medicine but the changes that we make in the physiology by many of the actions called Panchakarma. Another important uh, aspect of Ayurveda is that Ayurveda believes that disease is an aberration of physiology and bringing back the uh, aberration into back to normalcy is what Ayurveda is looking for. So, Samapala is Avya, Kshina Vartha is Avya, Vritha Kshavya. The three things are what Ayurveda does. So, restoration of the lost balance is the primary objective of Ayurveda. And there are two important aspects that Ayurveda uh, is proud of, are proud about is that when we say that treaty, a disease is treated, it does not end by culmination of the disease, that a disease is treated properly if it doesn't come again. Abhunar Bhavatva is one of the parameters of the proper treatment. Second parameter of the treatment is that yo anyanya mudhirir. When you treat one disease, should not give rise to another disease. If you ask a modern medical practitioner, put his hand on his step, tell me one medicine which you can give to your own child without giving rise to another problem. There are no medicine. If you look into the uh, indication of uh, me any medicine in the modern pharmacy, there will be more points in contra uh, contraindication than indication. Whereas Ayurveda has a very definite approach to make sure that a physician who properly understands, properly diagnoses, diagnose, he will not create any other disease by treating that is another important aspect of Ayurveda. Ayurveda understands not only disease but the human being also. There are 10 factors we look into a human being before we start treatment. And this is another unique feature of Ayurveda which includes the body type, the digestive capacity of the individual, the place of origin of that person, the type of the age of that person, the gender of that person, and the capacity of his body's metabolic procedures and those things are taken into consideration. That's another unique feature of Ayurveda, which is why I told you that Ayurveda is a medicine of futuristic science, science of futuristic medicine. Because even today now people have been thinking about Tyler made medicine. Of the basis of that Tyler made medicine is the ten factor, Dushim, Desham, Balam, Kalam. Analam Pradim Vaya Sattum Sasmi Tadaharam Sukshma Sushmya. Go to the minutest details of their conditions and you understand the dosha imbalance and then you give off to them. That's another important uh, factor of Ayurveda. I just want to uh, take you a little more uh, technical, but that will help you to understand Ayurveda and how it is different from other systems and how it is important to understand the modern metabolic disorders from a different perspective. There are five, six conditions. Whenever a disease comes, happens in your body, it does not reflect as any symptoms. That is a state of accumulation. You may not even know other than a dullness, other than a, a lethargy, other than a kind of disinteration, certain things. That is a state of accumulation. This is the stage we have to identify a person himself, herself has to identify to prevent it to get to the second stage of aggravation, third stage of spreading, fourth stage of localization, fifth stage of expression, and sixth stage of exaggeration. Many times when you go to a healthcare system, you feel that we get the patient or a person at the stage of fifth or sixth, which becomes a stage where it is there is no more remedy. So if you are health conscious, if our public health systems are capable of addressing the first four stages, most of the hospital departments can be closed down. 
Because the primary strength starts in the first four stages. It is possible for us to identify the stages and correct ourselves so that we will not get into the stage of disease. And Ayurveda is a healthcare system, Ayurveda is not a disease management system. And Ayurveda gives a lot of important stages of evolution of, evolution of diseases. How it can be prevented at each stage. It's Nidhanam, Dvarsham, Tudurkyam and disease. These are the very important uh, aspect of Ayurveda which which keep which make Ayurveda different from other systems of medicine. This is one uh, important uh, uh, aspect of Ayurveda. When we see a person, we don't see the disease which is expressed. We see the patient's constitution, its systems and organs, age, season in which the disease has come, strength of the patient at that given point of time, what is the metabolic status of that person, what is tolerance level, what is the surroundings in which he is living, what is the ecosystem he is in, and how, what is the diet being practiced. These are the factors which I told as 10 factors. Along with the disease, causes, pathogenesis and symptoms, these two are put in place, then only we get the correct diagnosis. That's why the disease can get expressed in different, in different way according to the changes in the time conditions. And based on that, we understand the disease, we understand the patients, then all the precise diagnosis happens. That precise diagnosis will take you to the customized treatment, which is not one medicine, diet, lifestyle, medicines, therapies, Counseling and other. There are a lot of Atharapya Chilisa. Atharapya Chilisa, whether there is no materials are used, which involves counseling. And also relief. It's that it is not no symptom disease is not gone. The homeostasis, the internal environment, the middle of the interior that is in intact. And good quality of life, triangle mind, well being. These are the conditions we look forward to a patient when he get or she gets out of the disease condition. Sociologically looking to the issues of uh, Ayurveda, one of the most uh, uh, distorting things that is happening to Ayurveda is that we don't uh, hear Ayurveda, we hear, hear about herbal medicinal plants, we hear about herbal formulations, we hear about conservation of medicinal plants, which are important, but it is not Ayurveda is. Ayurveda without the philosophical understanding of the Dvartha principles which is working in the body, is herbals and minerals and animals becoming material. So we are completely negating the need of going beyond the herbal formulations to understand Ayurveda. As I told you, the interconnectedness of each and every system is not there in our system. And we promote because the modern reductionistic approach of allopathic system make us to come to think in a, in, a, in a peculiar way which has been trained our brain for 12 years or 15 years of our education to look at the world in an extremely limited way of narrow-mindedness. Splitting everything into the minutest form and building a theory and principle based on that last minutest particle and you may all know that small, the, all the parts will not make a whole. Or when it is separated, it becomes a different identity, different entity. That's the biggest issue that is being faced in the research today. So this is what we have to change. And when I look in front of you, you may see Ayurveda as a clinic that is mushrooming all over the villages and urban area or going globally. What we don't see is the Tattva and Shastra, the are two pillars which holds the science of Ayurveda. As you see a tree with a lot of flowers and fruits and leaves, with a lot of energy, you don't see the root which is holding that tree in that position for years. That is what the philosophy, that is what Shastra and Tattva, which hold this practice. These two aspects are eroding from the canvas of Ayurveda, practice of Ayurveda, the research framework of Ayurveda. So we get today very, very limited science of Ayurveda, trying to extract some molecules, try to synthesize into a chemical form, make it to capsule or injectable form and see that this is what Ayurveda is happening. 
I want to enlighten you about the scope of Ayurveda, which are beyond just a dietistic extraction of few elements of few plants that are not Ayurveda. So, I think uh, integrative medicine, which is an evolutionary stage of holistic medicine, which has the, got the root of uh, a great philosophy, which goes beyond medicine, beyond healing, beyond uh, the, the formal and uh, the functional world, it goes beyond to a level of spirituality. Spirituality in the sense, sense which sees the galaxy in its totality, asking and expecting human beings live in harmony with and without, does not believe in any kind of antagonism in a physiologically or anatomically and it wants to bring the law of the restoration. The world restoration is key to Ayurveda. If you look at anything, living and non-living, the lost imbalance, the mental imbalance make you madman. Physical imbalance make you a diseased person. Everything is imbalanced. Ayurveda gives a great resources, a great path a great kind of uh, direction to correct yourself, come back to restoration. Today's society is fragmented because of imbalance. We think in terms of religion, we think in terms of different narrow politics. We don't think, not even as a country, but we have to think go beyond country. So Ayurveda takes the cue of Vasudeva Kudambhaga, Loga, Samastha, Sukhino, Bhavandhu, these kind of concepts are very, very deep concepts which you will not see any other culture, which never talks about bringing kind of any kind of negativity in terms of physical, mental, or intellectual. That is the greatness of Ayurveda. As students of Gandhian thought, I think one of the most brilliant example of uh, his positivity and totality and holism was and is Gandhi, Gandhi law. Gandhi put into practice what we have been preaching. And he could achieve which many of us thought impossible to achieve through just collecting that kind of thought process, putting that thought process to the minds of people without any deep understanding of that society at that point of time who came back from a different country who went to a different country at prime age, but he could touch it because of his this confident confidence that he has created in the minds of people. I believe Gandhiji's practice of naturopathy is not an accident. He has been understanding the wholeness, whole, the, the, the connectivity between the microcosm and the macrocosm. And we say in Ayurveda, Yavando bhavaha murti mato dehe, tavando loge. Yavando loge tavando dehe. Whatever is there in the microcosm, in the anu, in the atoms, which is there in the universe. And the doctor, physician, the healer is only a conveyor belt between this micro and macro. This few words, I thank uh, for giving me an opportunity to share my thoughts. And I'll be happy to have any interaction. I believe one way monologue is always boring more than 20 minutes. But the interactive process will be more enlightening to